We are The God Culture, a group of independent researchers with no affiliation to any denomination nor organization whatsoever. We read the word and we test it as 1 Thessalonians 5.21 tells us, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. We do not intend to be confrontational, but to compare what the Bible really says versus the traditions of men, which Yahusha himself rebuked. Yahusha said to the Pharisees, Full well ye reject the commandment of Yahuwah, that ye may keep your own tradition, Mark 7.9. In this Solomon's Gold series, we have well identified and proven that the Philippines is not maybe or possibly or even with great certainty the ancient land of Ophir and the Garden of Eden, but indisputably, overwhelmingly so, 100%. If you haven't watched the series, then you may hear conclusions that sound foreign, so go back and watch, and we challenge you to prove all things. In two years, no one has proven the conclusions of this series wrong. We have explored many words within the history of the Philippines and even found Hebrew origins for that matter, recorded when the Spanish came especially. Pigafetta calls him Abba. That's who he says the Filipinos called their God, at least in one instance. And later he is recorded many times over as Bathala. Today we are told this is a God of animism because basically even the Jesuits did not agree with that point. Though today that is what we're hearing, at least in comments we hear that rather often. Yet it's not actually true. But when you actually explore the written history, especially the words of the Filipinos themselves, rather than the contrived Jesuit narrative, this will make perfect sense. And the word Bathala certainly sounds, well, Hebrew to us. I mean, just looking at the word, you can almost see right away, yeah, that's a fit. Perhaps this is because we find a direct, exact Hebrew etymology that makes far more sense than the narrative of academia, which makes no connections whatsoever and is frankly a very bad guess from what we find, as we do with many etymologies in Philippine history, especially those written by Jesuits. It's time to restore this word and this God, because ancient Ophirians generally never mention animism as their religion, nor did they worship Anitos in their words. No, that's a Jesuit term made up. Nor do they tell this story the way it has been represented, even in classrooms today, unfortunately. Let's review the facts and test this for yourself. We have shared other references in other parts of this series regarding the Spanish friars bragging about all but eradicating the previous history of the Philippines prior to their arrival. Here's one from the American Historical Association of all places from Washington, D.C., saying as much. The written record of the Philippine Islands starts with the coming of the Spaniards, not that the country had not had a history and a culture and a literature before, exclamation point. But the Spaniards, in their religious zeal, destroyed the earlier records as completely as possible. Therefore, much of what is known about pre-Spanish days, and there is still much to be uncovered, they need to watch the God culture, because they'll see much of it is becoming uncovered in this day, comes from the records of other countries which were in touch with the islands. Now, we are going to share with you the traditional narrative from Wikipedia. I know professors claim that invalidates this, but that's ridiculous, as this article is well-sourced and accurate. 
to what is being taught from everything we can find. And if it's not the traditional narrative you learned, well, let us know. We have heard from thousands already who have confirmed this is being taught like this in schools. And they're asking questions about this bat hala because they don't buy the traditional narrative. And just what does this really refer to? Let's get to the bottom of it and separate what history really says versus yet another traditional narrative that relies far too heavily on rewritten Jesuit narratives, rather than the ones who actually matter in determining the history of the Philippines, you know, the actual natives who live there, who spoke up even, but their voice is ignored in many of these references, and you'll see. According to the indigenous religious beliefs, now, where did they come from? What is that? Indigenous religious beliefs, all that, that must be directly from the people, right? Wrong. Those are the Jesuits, of course, not the indigenous people. It's their narrative. And we are going to show you how they continue on with this narrative, even after the Tagalogs warned them that they were wrong in their interpretation. How about that? You'll see. Of the Tagalog people, Batala, sometimes spelled Batala, is the almighty deity who created the universe. A god who created all that is? Does that maybe sound familiar? Oh, it will. Don't worry. It was after the arrival of the Spanish missionaries on the Philippines in the 16th century that Batala came to be identified as the Christian God. Really? So the Spanish even adopted Bathala as the Christian God? Hmm, why? Well, because he bears much more resemblance to the God of the Bible, even more than the Catholic God for that matter. Yep. Thus, it's synonymy with Dios, God in Spanish, or Divino, Divine, According to J.V. Panganiban, in some Visayan languages, Bathala also means God. Hmm. So, who recorded the so-called pagan gods in the Philippines anyway? Well, again, the Jesuits did. First, follow this, they erased the history. But then, they restored it, which only makes sense under the understanding that they were actually installing new narratives in the first place. Or there would have been no reason to wipe out a history and then restore it. What a waste of time. I mean, you talk about an oxymoron. If what they say is true, they would have never reinstalled any history of these gods. Yet, they did, didn't they? Yes, and it's taught today. It's funny because they call these the indigenous religious beliefs of the Tagalog people. Yet according to whom? The natives? No, to the Jesuits. They erased all the natives' writings and did not allow them to record the history back then. No, only the Jesuits were allowed to record the history. What does that tell you? Well, you know whose narrative you're reading. Sometimes referred to as anitism or less accurately, using the general term animism. Well, remember that. It's inaccurate to call ancient Filipinos animists. The term is wrong even to the Jesuits in history. So, that is not accurate. We're well documented by Spanish missionaries. Yeah, but who else? Well, nobody. Mostly in the form of epistolary accounts, and as entries in the various dictionaries put together by missionary friars. So, beliefs according to whom? The Jesuits. Notice, when Pigafetta came to the Philippines with Magellan, he records a culture which could read and write, yet where is their written history? Well, for the most part, it's gone. But no matter we can find enough to piece it together, and we have. 
The missionaries who observed the Tagalog peoples in the 1500s noted, however, that the Tagalogs did not include Badhala in their daily acts of worship. Was that what the Tagalogs say? No. Frey Buenaventura noted that the Tagalogs believed Badhala was too mighty and distant to be betrothed with the concerns of mortal men. And so the Tagalogs focused their acts of appeasement to the immediate spirits which they believed had control over their day-to-day life. Now, wait a minute. Who does this sound like? Is this really so hard to see through? This is the exact position of Judaism today, believing we should not even pronounce the name of Yahuwah, the unapproachable, ineffable God. And the Catholic Church, too, believes that Yahuwah is far off and distant and unreachable. Thus, mankind needs a pope to essentially play the role of God on earth. Well, no thank you. You are seeing a narrative formed by Jesuits, really just offering their exact doctrine already in existence. Why? Well, you will see they equate this God, Batala, to the God of Christianity. Hmm. In essence, he's not involved in everyday life, and in fact, don't pray to him directly. No, no. Pray to the saints and pray to Mary because they have time to listen to your petition. And Yahuwah does not. No, no. Well, that's wrong because he does have time. And you were to pray through John 14, 6, Yahusha, the Messiah, because there's no other way to get to the Father but through him. So, This is really the same narrative, ultimately. Not really so new. Because Badhala was considered a distant entity, the Tagalog people focused their attention more on some scholars' term to be lesser deities and powers, which could be more easily influenced than Badhala, really. Because the Tagalogs did not have a collective word to describe all these spirits together, well, maybe that's because they never described them that way and they didn't worship them that way. Perhaps? Spanish missionaries eventually decided to call them Anito. Oh, so the native Filipinos did not call them Anitos. Got that? Since they were the subject of the Tagalog's act of Paganito worship, according to Scott, a careful search of sources from the 1500s reveals that there was no single word in Tagalog for the other deities to whom Bathala was superior. Now, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me that the Filipinos had a whole group of gods, a secondary tier of gods, and they didn't have a name for them? Really? Because that doesn't make sense. But let's move on. When necessary, Spanish lexicographers referred to them all as anito, again, the Jesuit word and concept for that matter, not that of the native Filipinos. No. According to Scott, accounts and early dictionaries describe them as intermediaries, Batala's agents, and the dictionaries use the word abogada, or advocate, when defining their realms. But remember, the ancient Ophirians did not call them Anitos, nor is there any evidence ever produced that they worshipped Anitos, and we'll show you how they said they worship Bathala, which is what matters most. They worshipped him directly, prayed to him directly, and this is not it. These sources also show, however, that in practice, 
they were addressed directly in actual prayer. So talking about the second tier of gods, not Badhala. They were petitioned directly, not as intermediaries. Oh, wait, what does that sound like? In Catholicism, this is prayer to saints or Mary as gods, really. So this is not new. Scott cites the example of a farmer's prayer to Lakapati, where a child would be held over a field and the farmer would pray. Sorry, my Tagalog is really bad. So in English, Lakapati, feed this thy slave, let him not hunger. In early Philippine history, Bathala was strongly associated with Tigmamanukan, omen bird. Mm, are you sure? Not according to that actual Filipinos, but they'll ignore that too. So much so that early chronicler Antonio de Morga thought the Tagalog saw the bird as their ultimate deity. Really. The anonymous author of the Boxer Codex in 1590 also nearly made this mistake, but was advised by whom? By the Tagalogs, by the natives, by the locals, not to equate the two. Because Tigmamunmanakan, however you say that, was not the creator God, but only his messenger. So got that? Ancient Ophirians did not view this bird as Bathala, in their words, but they ignore that. The Jesuits ignore it, of course, and continue their narrative. This attitude tells us much. You don't quote a local people and then ignore their words as to whom their God was and form your own false narratives, but welcome to Jesuitism. Let's look at the etymology we are given in the traditional narrative. You'll never guess what they assume without proving, of course. Yep, once again, another word from the Indian Sanskrit. But is it really? Does that actually make sense? Well, see for yourself. The spelling of the name Bathala, given by Pedro Chirino in 1595, was perhaps a combination of two different spellings of the name. From older documents such as Badhala, wait, that's not Sanskrit, and Batala, that's not Sanskrit either. The latter was supposedly the correct spelling in Tagalog, since the letter H was silent in Spanish. Wow, this word looks familiar to us. Not just a little, but just looking at this word, we can already see the Hebrew roots of it. But let's hear them out and see what they have to say. Batala or Batala was apparently, oh, well, that settles it, right? Apparently. They offer no actual proof to such a trail, but let's follow it. Let's see where it leads. Derived from Sanskrit, Batara, noble lord. Wait, did the Filipinos refer to Bathala as a noble lord? No, but as the creator god, the creator of all things. See, you are supposed to see the word lord, which is not the name of Yahuwah in scripture ever, but replaced Yahuwah almost 7,000 times, and this done by the Pharisees and Catholics. And then you're supposed to say, oh, well, that must mean God, right? Wrong. That word Lord is not God. It is not Yahuwah. Which appeared as the 16th century title, Batara. Is that Bathala? No. In the southern Philippines and Borneo. Okay, so here we go again. The word is Batara, not Bathala. These are not the same word, and really, they are not similar. Any linguist 
that screws up an R and an L in sound would be completely incompetent. And these were linguists of high regard, in fact. It just doesn't make sense. We keep seeing this over and over and over, and yet it never makes sense. In Indonesian language, Batara means God. Okay. Well, at least the meaning is sort of there, though it's a different God that they'd be referring to in those areas. But that doesn't explain how Batara becomes Bathala. No, doesn't work. That's not a connection, and they are far from making it, and you'll see they don't. Its feminine counterpart was Batari. Well, that is even further from Bathala. Doesn't fit. It may be worth noting that in Malay, Batara means holy. Essentially the same word as Batara will give them that, but again, they make no connections to how it got to the Philippines and somehow becomes Bathala. Really doesn't make sense. Connection failed. We need to hold scholars to a higher standard of proof. They must prove things or be dismissed and ignored because this is not a connection. Okay, read it. Fine. Take it into account. But if it doesn't connect and they don't bother to even prove it out, then dismiss them because they're not proving anything here. And was applied to the greater Hindu gods in Java. Was Bathala a Hindu god? No such connection is made. No such reference. Not one. And Batara is not Bathala. And was also assumed by the ruler Maja Pahit. Bathala or Batala was apparently, there we go again, oh it's settled, settled fact, right? Wrong. Derived from Sanskrit, Batara, noble lord, which appeared as the 16th century title Batara in the southern Philippines and Borneo. Oh, so here we go again. This is called logic, but far from it. But Tara was used in the southern Philippines. Was that Bathala? No, no such connection is made. It's just assumed, and it's a very, very long leap in logic because it looks just simply as nonsense thus far without more proof, which they don't bother to provide. But you're supposed to take this as history and fact. It is not, we assure you. That was obviously what originated in Indonesia Malay migrations. Well, yes, in those migrations when they came to Mindanao, to the southern Philippines, yes, they brought their word, Batara. They did not bring a word, Bathala, that has any origin in their language nor the Indian Sanskrit. Not that anybody proves, period. But not all over the Philippines. And then to say it got corrupted from Batara to Bathala is really kind of ridiculous without proof, which they offer none. We've read much on this for some time, as many of our viewers have asked about the origin of this word for about two years now. We find nothing that connects it to Malay, Indonesian, nor especially Sanskrit origins, period. It's just not there. It is a totally different word, but we'll show you an exact etymology, letter for letter, which even fits the meaning and the history when it's all restored. Again, if you haven't watched this series and you're just watching this video, you have no idea how much evidence is out there. It is way overwhelming. Now that's etymology, not guessing like this, at a possible connection. If the sun, the stars, the moons, and the planets are all aligned on the third uh, equinox of the 5th century of the, you know, I, I, come on. I mean, it, this, is, this is ridiculous. Now for the words off the Filipino people. 
Because after all, is this not their God? Would they not know whom he is better than the Jesuits who have a clear agenda to make the Philippines sound as pagan as possible? To justify their rape and pillaging of the land? Of course. An excerpt from the Boxer Codex, 1590. About Bathala, according to the heathen, Tagalogs, were they? I'm not so sure. In fact, we're pretty sure they were not the heathens. The Jesuits were. They said that this god of theirs was in the air before there was heaven or earth or anything else. Wait, does that not sound like Yahuwah? Hmm. That he was from eternity and not made or created by anybody from anything. Okay, definitely fits the description of Yahuwah. Keep going. And that he alone made and created all that we have mentioned simply by his own volition. Yup, that's Yahuwah. Because he wanted to make something so beautiful as the heaven and earth. Yeah, there's Genesis 1-1 right there. And that he made and created one man and one woman out of the earth. That'd be Adam and Eve. That's Yahuwah. From whom have come and descended all the men and their generations that are in the world. Okay, take away the Jesuit words and what do we actually have in this reference? Thus far, Yahuwah, or at least it sounds like it so far, right? But again, the Jesuits will recognize this and then ignore it and go on describing this very pagan god with these pagan rituals, with these idols associated Yet the words of Ophir do not match theirs. Imagine that. Anateria was the term coined by Spanish missionaries. Right, not by the Filipino people. Remember that. To denote the Tagalog religion as they observe that despite the people's belief and respect to the omnipotent Bathala, Omnipotent? That's another Bible word describing Yahuwah. Hmm. They offered prayers and sacrifices to ancestral spirits called Anito. Say the Jesuits, but not the Filipinos. In fact, we already covered the Ophirians never called them Anitos, period. That's a Jesuit term. And so is this term of religion. They are making this stuff up. And you'll see that by the end of this video. Miguel de La Orca, 1582, asked them why the sacrifices were offered to the Anitos and not to Batala. They answered that Batala was a great lord and no one could speak to him directly. Again, that's Catholic doctrine of the untouchable God from a Jesuit agitator desiring to change history. Remember that. And it is the same in modern Judaism or ancient Phariseeism, which is Zoroastrianism. They are all the same. Kabbalah. Because he lives in heaven. So, he sent down the Anitos to provide for them. Again, not a term used by Ophir, just Jesuits. Thus, the soul of a person becomes an Anito after death. Oh, great. Now we have occult mythology and, oh yeah, Catholic mythology. As these Anitos are what? Well, they are angels or perhaps demon spirits, although to be compared to a bird... Sounds more like angels. So, really this is saying men become angels when they die. Which is Catholic doctrine. But not Bible. And not something Ophirians recorded as their worship. Which, in fact, was direct to Badhala, not through Anitos or anyone else. According to their own words, 
we will show you. To serve Batala and intercede on behalf of the living. Similar to concepts in folk, Catholicism, or spiritualism. Oh, what a coincidence. The Jesuits make up doctrines and histories to attribute to the Filipino people and... They don't even have the imagination to change the doctrine, but make it similar to folk Catholicism. Wow, that is what you have here. But Hala is believed to have married the ancient deity of fertility. Oh, now we have the fertility goddess, the one from Babylon, and the same one worshipped by Catholicism today, called Mary, but given the attributes, titles, and even the face of the ancient goddess from Babylon, the harlot. That is whom she is. She is not Mary. Yep, they aren't creative at all, are they? And hermaphrodites. Okay, so that's one of both sexes, having male and female organs. So wait a minute. This is Baphomet worship, which the Catholic Church is all too familiar with as the origin of the Jesuits, the Knights of the Temple, or Knights Templar. You know, the ones from Jerusalem? Yes. Pharisees, really. This is their god, not one of the Filipinos, according to Filipinos of that era, anyway, and we'll show you. Lakapati, after the cosmic creation. Now this is fascinating. Appropriation of the term Badhala by Roman Catholic missionaries. After the conversion of the Tagalogs to Roman Catholicism, the shamans were condemned by Spanish missionaries as witches. Now does this actually mean they were shamans or witches? No. There are ample records of Catholics killing Protestants, many times calling them witches, yes, but they weren't witches, and were forced to convert. Ancestral and nature spirits were demonized, sometimes conflated with biblical demons, and the term Anito, you know, the one the Jesuits made up. And yes, they probably would be demons, but they're made up, see. Itself became synonymous to idol. Of course it did. The Spaniards believed that the Anitos were demons. Well, they would know they made them up, who deceived the Tagalogs from the worship of God. But Batala was the exception. What? To this, as he was similar to the Christian concept of the Creator. So they admit Badhala is similar to the Christian God. Really? Isn't that odd? According to Sir John Bowring, a visit to the Philippine island, the priests have been generally willing to accept the name Badhala as not objectionable in substitution for Dios or God. Now, Catholicism certainly takes on elements of paganism in different cultures, which is antithetical to Scripture. Exact opposite. But this is interesting, as they could have just called the Anito saints, really. But that wouldn't fit their agenda, now would it? Indonesia, it is identified that the Philippine Batala is related to the Indonesian Batak. Wait, is Batak Batala? No. Even further from it. That's not a connection. It's nonsense. Chief god named Batara Guru, son of the blue hen goddess. Manuk Patiaraja. Manuk means hen, and it is manok in Tagalog. Okay, there's a word you can actually connect. But that doesn't connect batak to bathala in any sense. It's, I mean, in essence, what they just pulled here, 
is sorcery. You know, don't look at the other hand. So they'll focus on something that is a good etymology. Manuk to Manok makes sense. And then they take that and say, oh, well, if that's the case, then Batak must be Bathala. Uh, because chicken? Okay. Maybe that should be their answer. Just the whole Wikipedia article should say, because chicken. That's it. That's all we have to say. Because that's all we've said in this whole article that actually has made sense thus far. In Indonesian, Javanese mythology, Shiva known as Batara Guru. So now they're trying to equate Batala with Shiva from India, which they make no connection. Not even a clever deception. Rather ignorant, this is. So, okay, our turn. Here is an etymology which actually makes sense and matches absolutely perfectly especially when one considers the abundant history of this series, which connects the Philippines and Israel in the days of Solomon. Bathala Bathala, the creator god of the Tagalogs. Let's look at the Hebrew. The first four letters, Bath, is a direct Hebrew word. It means Hebrew measure as a means of division of liquids. Wait, dividing the liquids? Or better term, dividing the waters? Is this not an exact reference to Genesis 1-6, where Yahuwah divided the waters from the waters in the beginning days of creation? Hmm, is this not a reference to the Creator God? The creator who separated the waters. But that's only the first half of the word. Let's continue. Allah, not associated with the guy over in Mecca, not the moon god, uh, used to be known as Hubal, but just the Hebrew word. That's not Hebrew, by the way. It means a rib to go up or ascend. Does this not match Genesis 2.22, where Yahuwah created the first woman, Hava, origin of this land, Havila? In fact, so very logical that her creation would become part of this name. He created woman from one of Adam's ribs. Wow. Can it get any clearer? Letter for letter, and the meaning is an exact fit to the God of creation, a double meaning of the creator God. Dude, of course, some will say, nuh-uh, just as they did with Maharlika, yet no one has actually proven that that is not Hebrew, nor will they be able to prove that this is not Hebrew, especially not with stretched etymologies that don't even fit, no matter how much they stretch, and they aren't even the same letters. This is exact. Wow. And even if you remove the H, now you have an exact reference to the creation of the first daughter, the first woman in her land of Havila. Which means what? One who suffers pain that brings forth. That's Eve's, Hava's curse. And is a direct Hebrew variant of Hava, Eve. Varied to the exact meaning of her curse. So not just one spell, but both fit the Hebrew perfectly. And don't fit Sanskrit, nor Indonesian or Malay languages at all, really. So is it an issue that this is feminine in nature? Not at all. Um, it certainly refers to a he. Bathala is a he. But this is the land of Hava, Eve, Havila. 
Now here is what is fascinating. This is confirmed. In all places in Babayin, the ancient script of the Philippines. Check this out. It will blow your mind. So how does this tell you, you said, about yourself? Is it that, like, for instance, if you spelled out my name, all of the symbols together and the letters of my name would mean something together? Right. Yes, yes. Wow. To show you, it's maybe the best thing is to write the word God, but mm -hmm. in my language. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just um, put it to you in Roman alphabet. So this is uh, Bathala. Let me just explain. Bathala, there is a... Uh, female element of uh, in God, mm. there's a male element, mm -hmm. the T is the strength, it's mm. like uh, lightning, it's mm. like a hammer, strong, oh, and then HA is like the breath, it's mm. the breath of life. Mm. So, so when you look at Bathala, it has the female aspect, it has the strength, it's like lightning, it's far mm. spark. So here, ha, mm -hmm. which would be the breath. The breath, I mean like ha in inner language, hinanga means breath, hanging means air. So mm. anything to do with the air. Uh, so it's the breath of life. Mm. So um, so God gave God is really a symbol of all this strength, spark, um, life. And this is ha, it's like flowing and the breath is flowing smoothly. And then as I told yeah, you, the, it's the uh, male. Lies, the male is that aspect. over here? Right, that's the one. You're very good. You're excellent. Love it. When inscribed in Bai Bayin, words are almost reborn with new meaning. I'm sorry. Uh, Jesuits, what part of breath of life do you not understand? This is amazing and confirmed right there in Baba Yin. Absolutely wonderful. This is from the Philippine deities list from Wikipedia. Sometimes referred as Abba. Ding, 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 ding. We know exactly how the ancient Ophirians worshipped Abba. And it does not fit this Jesuit narrative at all. And they worshipped him directly. Not his Anitos or demons or angels or whatever they might be. They're made up, contrived uh, elements of the Jesuits. He is the supreme god of being, creator of man and earth, and addressed sometimes as Batalang Mekapal. Uh, he dwells in heaven together with the lesser gods and goddesses. Not according to ancient Filipinos, he doesn't. That's not how it works. Aside from the lesser gods and goddesses, he sent his Anitos, ancestral spirits of mankind, uh, those would be Nephilim, disembodied spirits of demons, basically. No, Ophir did not worship demons. In order to assist the daily lives of every human, the term Anito can also be used for gods and goddesses, as ancient or ancestors can be deified, turned into deities. Well, yeah, in Catholicism, that is a belief, there's no doubt. However, in the terms of ancient Ophirians, no, doesn't work, and we'll show you the next reference. It really blows us out of the water. He provided everything mankind needed, to a point where he spoiled them too much. Hence, the Tagalog philosophy of Bahala Na. What comes will come, let it be. Oh, wait, wait a minute. When Moses asked Yahuwah what to tell the people of Israel to call him by name, he said, Haya, Haya, which means to exist, to be. And here we have that very similar meaning right here in this word. This is a contrived narrative indeed. But see, Abba is better recorded, even though somehow... He doesn't make the Philippine deities list other than hidden in this reference to Batala. But no matter, as equating the two completely sinks the Jesuit narrative. 
and that is what they do. Check this out. Abba, from Pig of Feta's journal, when he came with Magellan. The inhabitants, Filipinos, responded, you will not find this one in textbooks, that they had no other worship. Stop. No other worship. That's what Filipinos say. Forget the Jesuits. That's what Filipinos say. And by the way, Pigafetta was a Jesuit historian, and that's what he said. But these were the initial accounts. They would then change the story and create their controlled narrative throughout the years. So by the time De Morga, um, almost 80 years later or whatever, shows up on the scene, and you'll see all kinds of contrived narratives with him, they're into a cover story at that point. But Pigafetta is just sharing raw data, and yet still he has his ways of sneaking things in. But still, this is totally against what the Jesuits are saying, isn't it? So, does he mention that they worship him through Anitos? No. Demons? No. Angels? No. Just this one polytheistic creator. Wow. But raising their clasped hands and their face to the sky, and they called their god Abba, gold mine. That is what Filipinos said they worship. Now, is that everybody? Is that all of them? No, no. In fact, Pigafetta even encountered an island, a small island of Muslims. That's all he mentions about Muslims. And he said with the other populations, if they were Muslim, they would have treated them different. In other words, they're not Muslim. Because we know whom Abba or Bathala, as the Jesuits equate this, we know who that is. This is the name Messiah used in the Garden of Gethsemane. My Father. His personal title. The way that he personally addresses Yahuwah. He even says in another passage, they call the Lord's Prayer. Our Father. And yes, ancient Ophirians, Shebaeans, and Tarshishan kings came to bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh from the Philippines after his birth. See part 11, if you have not. We prove that, too, from Scripture. It's right there under our noses and has been all of these years. So how did this get so screwed up? This source is believed to have been crafted by Spanish friars so that the Tagalogs at the time would stop believing in Batala and would instead embrace the Christian god who the friars branded as undying and therefore more powerful. Yet, aren't they really talking about Batala? Isn't it the same descriptions that the Filipinos used to identify Bathala, it would be, thus far, everything that we've seen, right? When most of the natives were converted to Christianity during the Spanish era, Bathala was referred interchangeably by many as the Christian God. As the natives would not let his name be forgotten, despite threats from the Spanish colonialist and friars. This one backfired. It backfired because they were trying to erase the creator God. They were trying to mix in other gods, demons. And it didn't work. It was rejected. Exactly. The Jesuits basically co-opted Badhala into their control system of worship and they redefine him in history. But let us not allow them to get away with it. Present day beliefs. Many of these indigenous beliefs persist to this day in syncretistic forms discussed by scholars as Philippine variations of folk Islam and folk Catholicism. Wait a minute. 
I thought the Jesuits eradicated such history and beliefs. No, they are the ones who made them up. If they wanted them erased, they would have stayed erased. Modern-day scholars such as Scott, Giacano, and Maguet, and theologians such as Gorosp, agree that the indigenous religious beliefs, now remember that word, which we already showed you, they made up this term, and all these mostly, of the Tagalog people persist even to this day in the form of folk religion. For example, Almasera notes that the encounter with Spanish Catholic Christianity did little to change the worldview held by the pre-Hispanic Filipinos. It resulted, however, in the formation of a folk religion, namely Filipino folk Catholicism, a syncretistic form of which still exists. Now, how about that? Because it is Catholicism, actually, which they installed into history, even. This is actually the religion the Jesuits created, probably as an alternative to direct Catholicism, so that they get them either way. Scott, in his seminal 1994 work, so even in 1994, this narrative persists, notes that there are striking similarities between accounts from the 1500s vis-a-vis modern folk beliefs today. He describes the account of Miguel de la Orca, account in particular to be Remarkable in that it sounds like what is now called folk Catholicism. Exactly. Because that is exactly what they created. Catholic scholar Friar Vitaliano Gorospe. Meantime notes. Even today, especially in the rural areas, we find merely the external trappings of Catholic belief and practice, superimposed on the original pattern of pre-Christian superstitions and rituals. No, what you find is the Jesuit profanity they made up and pushed on Filipinos as if it were theirs. Their stories do not match that of ancient Filipinos in their own accounts, and that is a very serious flaw. They quote them and then ignore them because they have an agenda that needs to be exposed for what it is. The very ones who conquered and plundered this country, killing millions, are telling you what your history was because, well, they erased yours and rewrote it. Yet the first accounts from the likes of Pigafetta, which were written before the control paradigm completely set in, Prove otherwise. Ladies and gentlemen, Bathala is far more likely Yahuwah in every sense, the creator God of Genesis, according to the Filipino portions of these accounts. And then it is spun as the opposite by the Jesuits. Don't buy it. Thank you for watching our Solomon's Gold series. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell or just click the next screen. Share this video with others and check out our website at thegodculture.com. Always remember to prove all things for yourself. Yahuwah bless and on our coming conferences in the Philippines, we offer our updated schedule next as we have some additions. And we are still working on more. This will be quite a month in May and only the beginning. Don't forget to go online and register even if you're not sure exactly whom is coming with you because our hosts need to prepare. Thank you. We are so excited 
As our schedule continues to grow for May 2019, we would like to take a moment and thank all those who are praying for these upcoming conferences in the Philippines and all those who have given to support the effort on Patreon. It is so helpful to have your support going into the schedule and future conferences. We can't wait to get out and meet many of you and deliver the message of Solomon's Gold series to many who have never watched the videos even. This will be a process, but this is a great start beyond our expectations. Around 15 dates are booked now, and what a month this will be. But it will not end there, so if you cannot make a conference, there will be more to come, hopefully for many years. We have had so many step up on so many levels, even some taking on full event responsibility. And thank you to all our hosts who are working so hard to prepare. We also want to thank our partner, Pastor Paul Madrano, who has done so much to make these events a reality. We love you, Pastor Paul and Susan. It's getting close now, and if you feel led, there will be a link on the next screen that you can click and give to support these conferences still. This is not merely an effort of the God culture, but so, so many. And thank you all so much. The Philippines is truly rising. Rise, Sheba, Ophir, and Tarshish. Rise. Yahuwah bless all.